You're completely drenched, standing on top of what's left of a skyscraper, only metal bones and broken concrete now. You look down at the sea that was once a city. You say to yourself, is this it? The end of humanity? You close your eyes, and then a bright light shines directly at you. Nine hours earlier, another busy day at the office. You're sitting at your desk in your personal office space on the top floor of the tallest building in the city. Yes, you've done pretty well for yourself in your career. The beautiful panoramic view is unbeatable. Floor to ceiling, thick glass windows and crystal glassware all around. But you can't really enjoy such a magnificent view since you're buried in work. Your large screen TV blasts some breaking news of unexplainable incidents around the world. You reach to turn up the volume, but your phone ringing pulls your attention away. You turn the TV off and answer the call. It's your brother. He says he's flying in from out of town and wants to see you, but it's the usual excuses for you. You're swamped with work and behind deadlines. Speaking of which, it's almost lunchtime and you still haven't gotten through half your work for today. That's when you notice some liquid dripping down your computer screen. You grab a tissue to wipe it off, but what's this? You can see the insides of your monitor where you just wipe the drip. You look closer and see even more liquid rolling down. More of the screen's insides are becoming visible. You jump out of your seat nervously. Just then, you see a drip rolling right in front of your eye. There goes another one. You yank your glasses off, only to see their lenses seem to be melting too. You grab your phone to call someone, but as soon as you try to dial the number, you feel more liquid. The phone screen is also melting and dripping all over you. You throw your phone across the room in horror. That's when you glance over at the windows, liquid cascading down from all the corners. You slowly approach and examine it, your heart beating out of your chest. You poke your finger and it punctures through the five inches of thick glass. Then you stick your entire hand through it. The wind blows your hand on the other side. You pull back your arm and wipe off the liquid. Suddenly, the glass itself completely melts and washes away like a waterfall. Then your whole office's panoramic glass melts and turns into liquid. You turn the TV back on to the news and just catch a glance of what's happening before the TV screen melts entirely. You run downstairs to the conference room to use an old landline phone to call, but nothing. The small display screen melted and fried the entire machine. Everyone's running around in a panic, trying to call somebody, anybody. Even radios have some glassware in them, so they're out of the question too. You catch bits and pieces from your panicked colleagues, something about glass suddenly melting all around the world. All glass, globally? This isn't just about jars, bottles, and bowls. House insulation, mirrors, light bulbs, cables, so many things surrounding you have glass in them. Oh, this isn't good. You run out of the building with everyone else. You're immediately met with ankle-high water. All the cars and buses are missing windows. The glass on the traffic lights and street lamps have also melted and drips on people like rain. If your brother is flying into town, you can only shudder at the thought of what's happening up there. The triple pane windows would melt away and all the air would rush outside as the cabin depressurizes. It'd look like a tornado striking inside the plane. The windshield would melt and disappear right in the pilot's faces. In reality, your brother's flight would probably be fine, since airplane windows aren't made of glass, but acrylic. But you don't know that, and the thought of him being in danger makes you sick to your stomach. You brush these horrible thoughts out of your head. You need to figure out how to get in contact with your brother. But before that, you need to find a safe place to wait all of this out, and fast. There are traffic jams on every street, as far as the eye can see. The mall in front of your office once had huge glass walls, but it's all gone. A stampede of people are rushing out. People and... fish? That's when you remember. They'd recently installed a massive aquarium inside the mall. It had all kinds of exotic fish from around the world. You look down and see them swimming around your feet. You start running to your apartment. It's not too far away. You should make it in time. But the deeper you get into the city, the more liquid you have to push through. It's up to your knees, now your hips, your waist. It's up to your chest by the time you get downtown. Almost there. But you can't make it to your building. The waves are too powerful, and there are too many obstacles in the way. A hot dog stand floats past you. The water is nearly to your nose when... You're suddenly pulled onto some kind of makeshift raft. 
There are others on board. You're all cramped up, and there's barely any place to sit. The current carries the raft faster and faster through the city. And that's when you see it. What was once the hill everyone loved to ride bikes and skateboard down is now going to be an extreme water park ride that nobody asked for. Everyone braces themselves before... Whoa! This is even tougher than whitewater rafting. Everyone gets tossed off board and falls into the glass flood. You try to swim back to the raft, and then you see it. Them! Dozens of shark fins! Oh, of course. You're almost to the part of town where the city aquarium is. Well, was. The sharks start swimming towards you. You're about to be their midday snack when you quickly swim into a window of the nearest building to you. They can't get in. You're safe. For now. This building, the whole city, the entire world, it's all about to be underwater. Your only choice is to get to the roof. But the water gushing down the stairs keeps pushing you back as you climb them. All the while, the water behind you on the lower floors is rising faster than you can climb. You finally make it and see the whole view in front of you. Almost everything is submerged, save for some skyscrapers and everything on hills. The glass flood got to the coast, and now it's all mixed with the sea. You watch some cargo ships floating their way downtown, smashing into buildings and causing even more chaos. Is this it? The end of humanity? You close your eyes, and then a bright light shines directly at you. A helicopter points a beam of light right at you and releases a ladder for you to climb. Without thinking twice, you scale up and dry off. The pilot turns around and, what luck, it's your brother who came into town to see you. He just happens to be a professional pilot, helping everyone he can. He takes you to a survivor camp with others. Scientists can't explain what's going on, apart from glass spontaneously turning into liquid. Some glass slowly liquefies, like ice melting under the hot sun, while the other glass quickly converts in a matter of seconds. You find out that the Earth's water level has increased by 30%. That's enough to flood coastal cities like the one you live in. Some small islands were submerged completely. Many of them experienced tidal waves after intense liquid formation occurred. Think of it like dropping an ice cube into a glass of water, but scale it up. The ripples in the glass were the tidal waves, and instead of the ice cube remaining, it melted instantly and spilled out to the rest of the world. Many glaciers and icebergs around the poles broke and drifted off closer to the equator. Under the intense heat, they eventually melted, causing a mega disruption in the ocean system. Ocean currents were affected permanently, as well as the ocean temperatures. That could bring even more problems like hurricanes, torrential rains, and massive storms. Even if there's no explanation for why this might have happened, humanity starts to rebuild. Construction companies find innovative ways to build without glass. Same goes for manufacturers of phones, computers, and tablets. The glass industry bounces back with innovation as well. It'll take ages for the world to get back on its feet, but it does. But at glass, it does.